we need to think about what size our gateway and our server need to be, and how many tags, clients, and devices we can handle. So now we'll take a closer look at each of those architectures, beginning with the standard architecture. So the most common starting architecture for Ignition is the standard architecture. So this consists of single on-premise Ignition server connected to SQL database, PLCs, clients. All the functionality is configured on the same Ignition server. If you're starting small, this is a really easy way to get started. Uh, Ignition has unlimited licensing, but it is limited by the size of the hardware. Larger hardware equals more device connections, tags, and clients. You're able to do more if you have more hardware on a server like this. And so we've actually gone through and put together some recommendations for server sizing as you're looking at more tags, more clients, more device connections. And we've included some of those here. As mentioned before, there's also a companion document. Uh, so you don't need to be furiously scribbling down notes here or rewatch this webinar in order to get this reference information that I'm about to show here. If we're talking about a small edition project and all we want to do is a handful of tags, handful of devices, a handful of clients, uh, you can see right here in terms of hardware recommendations, uh, something as small as an ARM device, uh, that would be a Raspberry Pi or something else that's a tiny, uh, hopefully industrialized, uh, but maybe not even industrialized uh, piece of hardware. Ignition can absolutely run on that. We recommend running very small systems on that. So if you're looking at anything more than 500 tags or a couple of concurrent clients or one to two devices, you'd probably want something bigger than that. But if you're just looking at a really small system, uh, those systems work great. As we go up in terms of numbers here, uh, two core system, two gigs of memory. Um, we always recommend an SSD. You'll notice that that's listed on each one of these. Um, but if we're talking a two core system, uh, somewhere between one and 10 devices, 2,500 tags, five concurrent clients could run on something like that. Um, and then two core, three gigahertz system, uh, four gigs of memory, SSD. Um, you might be looking at one to 10 devices still, but maybe double the number of tags and double the number of clients there. These would all be considered small systems. If we go up a little bit higher to a medium size ignition project, uh, you can see that these numbers start increasing pretty significantly. So uh, four core systems for all of these, different amounts of uh, memory and different amounts of speed, different speeds of the processor, uh, going anywhere from one to 25 devices for the um, smaller one that's listed here up to the largest one listed here is one to 100 devices, 10,000 tags to 50,000 tags, 25 concurrent clients, and 20 all the way up to 50. And then if we start going to really large systems, we're talking about full ignition SCADA systems or MES systems, if you're using the CEPASoft MES modules, for example, um, eight cores, eight cores, 16 cores, um, and then numbers scale up from there to 75,000 tags, 100,000 tags, 150 tag, 1,000 tags, and then up to about 100 concurrent clients. Uh, it should be noted that inductive automation in generating these, uh, these numbers are somewhat conservative, but we wanted to make sure that we presented a view that was relatively conservative here uh, if people are using this as guidance. We do have some systems that are over a million tags on the individual system. Uh, they generally are not going to be running a large number of clients at the same time or possibly a lot of device communication. It might be to a few specific ones or connected up to MQTT and having that information piped through with some of that processing happening elsewhere. Um, so these are just overall general guidelines that if you're looking at setting up a system a certain size um, that are a good starting point. Uh, and if you are looking at scaling any one of these numbers up more significantly than this, We'd always encourage you to reach out to inductive automation. We're happy to have architecture discussions. Uh, our team, my team, the sales engineering team has a whole variety of experts who all we do is talk to customers about architecture and design, and we would be happy to have that conversation with you. Kevin, yes. I gotta throw in a quick, just a quick question here. 
most vision clients you've seen working on a single server? Are there actually limits? We're at 541 right now. Great question. Yes, 541 is just about the largest I've seen. I've seen one system that's somewhere around 600. Um, so where this says 100 concurrent clients, just to, just to continue adding to uh, what I mentioned a moment ago, uh, this is based on an average type of design. So folks can design clients where the clients have 100 tags that are subscribed from the client to the server, um, or 1,000 tags that subscribe from the client to the server, or zero tags. And how heavy that client design is, is going to directly influence how many concurrent clients you might be able to have inside a system. Uh, systems that don't have any real active communication back and forth from the server to the client that only have updates once every 60 seconds or when users interact with them or press buttons in certain ways, uh, those can normally scale really, really high. And then other clients that you have, if you have really heavy processing that's happening, if you have machine learning algorithms that are happening on the server uh, as part of the support of that client, uh, if you have updates that are happening every second with advanced algorithms, you're probably going to get a small number of clients uh, because you're doing a lot and you'll be taxing the system quite a bit. And so it can scale anywhere between there. As I said, these numbers that we're showing here are normally uh, relatively conservative. Um, there's a good chance inside your project design that you could get more than this. Uh, but these are the ones that we have as just general guidance for folks who are spinning up an ignition gateway. Kevin, so one last question. What's the most significant devices, tags, or clients? For example, one to five devices, 100,000 plus tags, one to five clients. Is there anything more significant than anything else in terms of that? Yeah, yeah, good question. So we do have a little bit more information on that inside the guide itself, if you download that and take a look at it after this webinar, but I'll answer that very quickly. The devices, it depends on the type of device. So some devices are really lightweight, like Modbus devices. Other devices, uh, if you have drivers that are uh, communicating Allen Bradley protocol, that's more heavyweight, for example. Um, sometimes OBC UA devices, if they're updating things all the time, are even more heavyweight because it's a very heavy protocol. Um, if there are tags that you're subscribed over OBC UA to Siemens S7-1500, that are not changing, then it becomes really lightweight uh, because OPC UA is a subscription-based protocol. So number of devices can make a big difference. Uh, it's normally number of tags that's a bigger difference than the number of devices. And the number of tags, uh, every somewhere around every 50,000 to 100,000 tags is another gig of memory that Ignition generally needs, um, but that'll depend on if you're running expression tags, if you're doing scripting on every single tag or on a good portion of tags, or if you're not. If you're just doing simple tags that have simple value updates, then they're not a big load on the system either. Uh, and in that case, uh, if you just have really simple things that are coming through and you're not doing advanced scripting and you're not doing expressions and evaluations and calculations on a good portion of things, then normally it's the clients that are the heavier piece of the load. Uh, and clients generally take CPU um, as opposed to memory. They'll take a certain amount of memory, but uh, CPU is the heavier resource that's available for that. I've seen some folks go bigger than 16 cores on their systems if they have a large number of clients. So. Uh, it's not unheard of to do 32 cores all dedicated to ignition uh, in order to have everything uh, running on a single system or possibly split out with a hub and spoke type architecture there as well. So yeah, in terms of the single standard architecture and notes about this on all of these architectures really is that results can vary based on design choices. And I've just been talking about that, um, but it's worth noting that explicitly here. So uh, faster pull rates, increased value changes, utilization of other ignition features like scripts, transaction groups, SFCs, and more do have a significant impact on the system. Um, everything that you're adding to the system takes a certain amount of CPU cycles. And of course, the amount of CPU that you have available is going to affect how much you can scale up for each one of those items.